I want to call mm -hmm. this meeting yes. to order at uh, 5, 513 p.m. So can I get a motion to call the meeting to order? I move, I move that we call this meeting to order at 513 p.m. Can I get a second? I second. Can I, I get a second? Thank you. It has been seconded. Uh, now, before we adopt the agenda, I would like to make some amendments to our agenda because it was not on our agenda as I have looked over it. And so uh, I have four more items to add on. So we're uh, 4.10, we're going to add 4.11. Uh, and I sent it out uh, before. Uh, there was a lady that was on the conference and she, her name was Miss Teresa Edens and she had a question about one of our buildings and uh, we needed to get an update on that. If somebody can uh, please uh, mute your buttons, please, if you don't mind. Vice President okay. Ray, uh, building updates is on the agenda. O. Baptiste, Johnson and Symington. Was there another building you wanted to add? Yes, ma'am. There was another building I had sent and I had asked about the, the information. It was from, uh, the lady's name was Ms. Teresa Edens. Uh, I can't think of the name of the building right offhand, but I have sent it out before and I never got any information on that. Uh, um, and Ms. Edens is going to speak at the, Ms. Edens, Ms. No, Edens is going no, to no, speak. No, 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 ma'am. She's not going to speak. I just I'm need to get it up. Uh, I just, Union Point, yeah, there Union it is. Point. And I just wanted, yeah, and I want to get some information on it because she had talked about it in the last bond meeting. So I didn't get an update on that. That'd be 4.11. Can uh, we, 4 uh, Vice President Reagan, if you don't mind, can we just add that to 4.7? Okay, you can add it to 4.7, no problem. Uh, so that'd be, uh, that'd be building Union Point on uh, 4.7. And then on, uh, let's see here. So uh, I guess I can add four point, on 4.9 where we have compass walls. We got that on there. Okay, I see that now. But we also were supposed to get a update on the vans going over to compass. Uh, we were supposed to be getting some type of bid or something that Mr. Uh, Weekly had talked about before. Uh, we didn't get an update on that. And that would be on, so we can add that to, uh, four point uh, that'd be four point nine two on the compass parking lot I guess for the vans. I want to add that on there, and then uh, so for four point eleven, I wanted to get a uh, up update on the Smith Hill football field scoreboard. Uh, I heard some about it. it was in the process. We were supposed to get it fixed, then it wasn't fixed, and then we never got any more updates on them. So I'm just going back on that. And I think it was one more. Mrs. Uh, Carter, she had something to add for to make 4.12. Ms. Carter, go ahead. Ms. Carter? What you know what, Mr. Reagan? I slipped my mind. What, what I think I was talking about. If you didn't, did you already bring up the Smith Hill building? Did you already add that talk on that agenda about the building? Yeah, it's on there. It's on. Yes. And I think you already touched yes, bases on the van. Yes, ma'am. Yes, okay. ma'am. It's on there. Well, I was talking about the van. I wanted to talk about that okay. uh, utility van. Right. I didn't know if it was recovered. So that was one I just added. Okay, so that'd be 4.11 uh, on the utility. That was it for me. I so think I had those So that's amending my agenda. Okay, so I'm amending my agenda before I approve it. So now I would like to uh, make a motion that we adopt the agenda, uh, adding a, a 4.11. Uh, well, no, let me go in. Let me go in order. So we're going to go from. 4.9, which would also include the compass parking lot for the vans. Um, and also, we also need to uh, put it on the building, which would be 4.7 for the Union Point. And then 4.11 will be an update on the van, utility van. So did everyone get that? 
Okay, so now I am seeking a motion to adopt the agenda with the amended 4.7, the amended 4.9, and then add it on a 4.11. Okay. Let's see. I believe that was uh, sorry amendments to the agenda. Go ahead, one of you guys. I thought someone was already talking. So wasn't someone already speaking? Uh, okay. Go ahead. I sorry, guess President not. Briggs was right. trying to. Go ahead. ahead. Oh, I was going ahead and let you go. You were already speaking, so go right ahead. I move that we accept the um, amendments to the agenda to add items 4.11 to 4. Point, was it 13? That's right, Mr. Reagan. No, President Briggs, you're moving to you adopt the agenda 7. with the amendments to. 4.7, 4. 4.9, and 4.11. Well, I'm trying to, I'm trying to amend the agenda. Hello? Right, you're, you're moving to adopt the agenda with the amendments to 4.7, 4. 4.9, and 4.11. I move that we adopt amendments of 4.7, okay. 4.9, just... and 4.11. I'm back. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> did, did I get a second? I second. Okay, it is Miss. I second. For the amendments, okay. So now, did everyone get a, tr a chance to look at the minutes of uh, April the 9th? Everybody approve, uh, get a chance to look over the minutes? Was there any corrections needed? President? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead, Ms. Yes, ma'am. Um, can you take a vote on your motion? I thought uh, I got a second on it. You've right. got a motion on the floor. To, to you've got a second, but take a vote to adopt your agenda with it. With oh, the okay. Okay. Yes, ma'am. My fault. I do apologize. Thank you, Mrs. Johnson. Uh, sure. President Briggs, for the this is for the amendment. Aye. Of okay, Mrs. Director Carter. Yes. Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. It has been uh, approved for the amendment adoption of the uh, agenda. Now moving right on to the minutes. Uh, everyone has got a chance to look at the minutes, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Uh, now I'm making a. I'm at the chair is seeking a motion to adopt the minutes as printed. I move that we adopt the minutes as printed. Chair, I move that we. Can I get a second? Yes. Yes. Oh. I second. I did second. Okay, thank you. A second. Now, all right, thank you, President Briggs. Second. Thank you. All right, moving right along, we can go back to the agenda now. <laughs> uh, Mr. Weekly, I'm gonna turn it over to you Vice about President the football. Reagan. Yes, ma'am. Got a call to vote. I'm sorry. Can you take a vote on your motion? Oh yes, uh, President Briggs. Aye. Director Carter. Aye. All right, thank you. All right, moving right along for uh, to the agenda. Football field update, I'll turn it over to you now, Mr. Weekly. Okay, we have not, uh, so we got an email April 28th from the PIAC committee saying that we had been approved for 240,000 
uh, I began calling uh, the PIAC committee or the people responsible. And uh, I got to, I've left several, I got to talk to Courtney Banks uh, of the, of the and she referred me to Rodney Riffle, who then referred me to Mr. Warren, who I've worked with before. William Warren is the person I worked with when we put in the uh, track with the PIAC grant. I've left several messages from Mr. Warren. I have not heard from him yet. So we need to meet as uh, soon as possible so we can start planning out a timeline for, uh, construct, for the construction project. I have a scope of work that I've already designed up, but I need Mr. Warren to sign off on it as well. So kind of waiting on the city to get back with me to make sure that we're all in line and all in the same, same place. Um, when I did talk to Mr. Warren's supervisor, he, he told me that uh, we would probably be mostly in control of the construction project at this point that they had a lot on their plate and that uh, we would probably be more in control of that project than they would be. In the past, when we did the track, I really had no influence on construction and what things happened and so on and so forth. So this time it sounds like that we will have uh, most control over that process, but uh, I have not sat down with him yet. He has not returned any of my phone calls yet to sit down and uh, meet about next steps. So um, I will share with him the scope of work that we worked up. Um, I will share with him some of the designs that we have looked at uh, and then go down that process and I'll report back as, as I get more information from the city. Okay, Mr. Weekly, uh, I do understand that and I do understand that you guys had some, so how would that potentially, uh, since we will be over this construction, would that dip into any of the funding? We'll have nothing to do with the funding. The funding's already there, so uh, the 240000 that they've granted is already there. It's just the rest of the funding, whether we do it through our bond project or through our capital funds, so. Yeah, that's what I'm continuing asking. forward. Okay. Yeah. And uh, you guys are working on the designs uh, with the uh, coaches of, uh, of Ruskin and an athletic director to get the uh, design on the field also to look uh, nice also, correct? Yeah, the designs I shared with you are the same designs I shared several months ago with the coaches, the AD, and the principal. You got some feedback, uh, which one they wanted? Or you just you just gave that and you guys still have it. Yeah, they, yeah, they gave me feedback which ones they wanted. Yeah, they, they gave me some feedback about what they wanted. What well, now we just need to find out cost. Uh, you know, once we put it out to bid, uh, we'll have some what we call add alternates, which is hey, if we add this but take away that. So we'll we'll put the design in the, that they picked, and then we'll see about you know, adding this and taking away that, you know, according to cost as it comes in. So uh, we have the basic design down. It's just, uh, we need to get uh, the bids in. We need to get the scope of work out, get the bids going. And that way we can find out what some of the, the graphics pieces, the part that, you know, we need to kind of play with a little bit once we start getting bids in. Okay. President Briggs or Mrs. Uh, uh, Director Carter, do you all have any questions on the field? No, I'm okay. President Briggs. We might have lost her. Okay, I'm gonna move right along. If she does come back on, we will get no. back. No. Okay. I am on. No, I don't have any questions. Okay. All right, 4.2, moving on to the security uh, building cameras. I think uh, Dr. Skinner's got some information about that. Dr. Skinner, do okay, you want just, to information just tied to what I was doing. Cameras, I know. So this is the one that was tied to me. Um, this actually really is not a separate issue. Um, when we get down to the 4.8 gates and security discussion, I was going to talk a little bit about building cameras. Um, at that point, can we wait and talk about it then? Because it all ties together with 4.8, or would you rather talk about it separately now? Well, since I've already admitted our agenda, let's get it on out the way because I would have combined it all together at the time. I do okay. apologize. Yes, sir. So when we get to 4.8, we're well, going to talk I'll... about... Do what? I didn't say anything. Okay. When I was going get... to say lighting is with that as well. Okay. Um, and I don't have um, everything tied together, but we've started looking at... We have several 
buildings um, that truly are not necessarily secure from the public if that's what we're trying to do. Um, and so what we wanna do is make sure that we can monitor our buildings, um, especially on the weekend um, when we have incidents that could occur um, over breaks and long periods when school's not in session. And so uh, there are several um, buildings that Mr. Weekly and I went around and we went to every building in the district and looked at and saw how many gates were broken. Um, to be honest, uh, most of the gates are non-functional. Uh, and so we wanted to look at what is the best way to address this. And one of the thoughts, of course, is, and it's gonna be in 4.8, is to talk about possibly, you know, fixing all the gates that are broken and installing gates where we don't have any. Uh, so that's one thing. The other point is, is having good security cameras, um, perhaps putting buildings. And what I mean by good security cameras are cameras that, to be honest, would be so good that we could actually read the license plate on a car, um, you know, if we had one in the building. Currently, a lot of our cameras, uh, they do pretty good to tell the make and model of a car, but we definitely don't have anything that will go that good. Uh, Dr. Smith is been or she is working on trying to get uh, just some ideas just like we have ideas about gates that we're going to talk about tonight she's been working on trying to get ideas on what uh prices camera might be and the preliminary uh, information she has right now is close to ten thousand dollars a camera and so you know we have to look and see how many cameras are needed on buildings and as mr weekly said this also goes along with 4.3 Cameras don't do a lot of good if they're all in the dark and they don't have any light in order to um, display an image. So these are things that we're just starting to quote, talk about and trying to find out more information uh, on. And then, you know, once we make a determination on what direction we would like to go, then that might determine if we need to get sealed bids um, and, you know, take full items to the board. So this is really just the first phase of an examining different ways to monitor uh, and secure our buildings. Well, I'm glad that you guys are taking a more approach about our cameras. Uh, this has been something that has been mentioned a lot uh, over the course of the times uh, that we have been around. So I, uh, I'm quite sure we are going to be looking forward to seeing the prices that you guys come up with uh, and, and also, uh, whereas it won't be uh, uh, as effective as for cost effective taken away from the fund balance, hopefully we can put this on with the bond, uh, as we all know. Uh, but uh, as far as those cameras, we have been talking about them for a while, so I'm glad that now we're trying to do something about those. Uh, Director... Uh, Carter, do you have anything? No, I'm okay. I don't have anything. President Briggs, are you okay? Yes. Yes, and, and so I'll unmute my phone when I have something to say because I, I I don't want to have to keep touching my phone. Okay, no problem. All right, well, let's move on now at the Lights of the School 4.3. And I, and I think this is what we were just talking about. This ties with the cameras, because if the cameras are installed, we have to make sure, of course, there's light. Otherwise, the camera's in the dark and it won't see the images. So if we end up looking at cameras as an option, we will have to have an company uh, making sure that we place them in an area that's lighted, or we'll have to make sure that we add extra lighting uh, near the cameras. So that's what this is. This is just still part of that same discussion. Okay, well, I'm looking forward to that. And also, when we do get the, uh, do we have the manpower to also, once these lights, will our manpower be able to fix these things, or will we always have to call in other people to fix this? No, our, our electrician is a master electrician. He'll be able to take care of any of the lights. And uh, technology, as far as the cameras, Dr. Smith and them will be able to assist in that, correct? Uh, again, that one I cannot answer right now because Dr. Smith is still looking at the cameras um, and trying to determine which would be the best camera at the best price. And of course, depending upon how high they're mounted, they may or may not, um, because if they're up on the building someplace, they may need assistance from buildings and ground if they can do it. If not, we may have to call somebody. Um, I can't answer that question at this time. 
Okay, no problem. Well, I do appreciate the information that you do have uh, given us at this time, Dr. Skinner. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, moving along to uh, 4.4, hosting other, uh, hosting uh, district playoffs. Yeah, this time we're able to host uh, just a bit, um, uh, quite a few of our events. Uh, really the only ones that we're limited on uh, right now is wrestling, uh, which we're buying another mat this summer uh, from the same place we bought the mat from last year. So we, we're going to have two mats this year. Uh, so the, two competition mats. We've had two mats before, but it's competition mats. So uh, we could possibly hold districts in wrestling as well. Uh, the one that we're struggling with is track. Uh, track is the one where we have to buy some uh, hurdles and some and those uh, those things. And the pole vault piece is a piece that uh, we do not have the runway approachable for that. So we'd have to buy that buy that as well. So uh, everything else we can probably we can host in the district. Uh, there a lot of these a lot of these district events are held off site. Uh, like cross country is a perfect example. There's a lot of places that will host districts, but they host them at either a, a, a area park because uh, that's their home turf, or they do it at they rent a rent a golf course for a morning, or the golf course grants some access, and they run run the district at the golf course. So we're really able to host just about any kind of districts. What happens is though is that districts are decided by coaches and athletic directors. Uh, they try a lot of times to try to switch them around to the area of schools. They try to allow different people to host them. There are some times when districts are held at the same place almost every year just because the facilities are so nice and accommodating. I know, you know, my home school where my kids go to school, we've hosted district last five years in a row for basketball just because the coaches like the facility. So it's really not something that's, um, um, we're not limited in that. It's just, you know, really up to the coaches and ADs and what they want to do with that. So our facilities are adequate though. Okay, well, I'm I'm looking forward to us uh, getting in that to that discussion with all the uh, bond projects that's going on in our facilities. Uh, it would be nice to see uh, the Hickman Mills uh, uh, campus up there host a the field house up there host a district playoff when it comes time for basketball and also with our facilities with our football field. So I'm asking that you guys, uh, coaches that are on here, along with the AD, if he's also on here with Mr. Weekly, that we try to make a strong push in the next two years. We should see some type of, uh, of, uh, of something for us in the two years coming up, hopefully. All right, uh, moving right along to 4.5, community partners for the sports events. Yeah, we had uh, Marissa uh, made a comment, and I'll, I'll read that to you so you, you have that. Uh, due to the COVID-19 conversations that have started with potential partners, we're on hold as there is much uncertainty for many organizations. Below the list of organizations that have expressed interest, the Samuel uh, U. Rogers Health Center for $1,500 with the Jim Banner, uh, Southside Kansas City Optimist Club, uh, they would like a $2,500 donation uh, specifically to the Back to School Rally. U.S. Army with a $2,000 sponsorship for Back to School Rally. Missouri Care for $3,000 sponsorship to the Back to School Rally. Home State Health Care, a $4,000 sponsorship for Ruskin Boys Soccer Tournament for next year. The Community America Credit Union has uh, is con considering dollars for financial literacy and job internships, but no dollar amount has been put forward yet. Also, uh, McDonald's is under, is under consideration for a donation. Uh, the Hickman Mills Clinic, the Dental Corner, and the U.S. Marines. Uh, conversations with those will resume as soon as possible because of the state of the economy. Uh, Marissa expects that there will be changes to the above, but there may be more, there may be less. So I know the economy's hit, hit a lot of these folks pretty hard. So she'll revisit all those connections as soon as we're back full time and uh, we'll make sure that we uh, are try trying to get our partners to, to uh, commit to those dollars. I see that Gen X was down there. Did you read that one too? Yeah, yeah, Gen X. I think it's a part of, yeah, Gen X too. Okay. Now that $1,500 banner, where would that reside? In Ruskin or would that be up at the field house up at uh, Hickman? That one would be at the Ruskin gym. At the field house, so. I mean, at Ruskin's, okay. Yeah. All right. 
Well, I look forward to that. Uh, hopefully in the near future, we'll hear these people and we'll be able to send out something and thank them for their contribution the contributions that they have given to our school district. It would be nice and maybe to also when the board comes on to invite those people in for applause, applause too, to give them something. And once we get everything back too, to let them, let the community see uh, the people that we are on. Now also, have you all also thought about once this is uh, put in writing and put in stone, making sure that when we have our uh, programs that these people are on the back of the programs so that therefore we're paying the, our homage to them, letting them know, hey, we thank you and we want everybody to know. Is that also in the works too? I'd have to ask Marissa that. I assume that's a part of it, but I don't know that answer. Reagan? I'm here. I'm sorry. I'm okay. here. I, I went on mute. I would just wait for the next uh, item on there is the landscape. Yeah, long. I, you have a question, but it was approved in March, I believe. I think the March meeting. Mm -hmm. Did you have a question regarding it? Yes, yeah, so I wanted to make sure, and I've been noticing they are starting to. Uh, at first, when I was coming through here, they were not cutting behind the F, the uh, the office. That's they wouldn't be cutting behind that fence, kind of where the uh, uh, the uh, the high jump is, the long jump box. They were not cutting down there at first originally. Uh, I notice now they are cutting down up in that area. That was the reason why I was bringing it to your attention because I've noticed it a lot of times. It wasn't being cut. And I don't know if we're getting a checklist or if we have people going out and checking after everybody has finished cutting uh, our facilities. Do we have someone yeah. that does that? Yeah, our grounds crew and I and my, myself both, I'm, I'm in the district every week and we go around and check the buildings. Plus my grounds crew that still does some cutting at Johnson and Symington and uh, Old Smithdale. We, they go around and check as well. They're a new company, so they're they're still learning all the pieces of our grounds. And so there's gonna be a few misses here and there in the beginning. So we're in the first uh, five to six weeks and things have gone pretty well. Uh, a few spots here and there, but I call, as soon as I call the supervisor, they're, they're coming over and taking care of it. So I've been very pleased with their response. Yes. Uh, Mr. Weekly, is there any way we can create a, oh, go ahead. Are you, are you speaking? I think that's President yeah. Grace, go ahead. Yeah, one of the things that I've noticed as I tour the property, and I just logged back on, I'm sorry, y'all might have already talked about it, but they're, uh, they're missing a few spots along the fence lines at some of the schools and some of the areas don't look like they're being cut at. So, I mean, how are we addressing that? I, I may have missed it, you may have answered that already. Yeah, where we're, we have crews is doing inspections and I'm doing inspections once a week. So we're, any kind of feedback I get from them, I share with the company supervisor and then we they address those issues. So we're going to have some misses here and there in the first month or two, just because they're new to the properties and uh, what the expectation is. So we should be, we should not have any or very few misses that all come June 1st. So. Um, is there any way we can get a log created? Basically just tracking the how many cuts we get like during the month or where they cut that way we're able to keep kind of making sure that when we're spending our money on these companies that they are actually cutting these cutting the grass on these schools and just making sure that I don't want to micromanage but it's a good thing to keep a log maybe that way we can keep track on where schools they have touched bases with and cut have we thought about that they, they they cut yes, and they cut every part of the bid was that they have to cut every every property. So he calls me if he's unable to get to a property uh, due to usually due to weather. Uh, and at this point, he has not missed a property yet. Uh, the rain has happened to where he can still cut all the property uh, each week. So every week, with every property's been cut. Well, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, 
Dr. I'm sorry, Dr. Uh, uh, Weekly, I would like to uh, reiterate on and piggyback on Director Carter. I think it would be good to uh, provide a law uh, that so that therefore uh, whoever sits on these committees will always know what's going on. And then too, I would like to make a suggestion when we do bids for people to come out and do our grass, maybe one of you guys need to go and tour with them and letting them know what all needs to be done so that therefore uh, when a person sees something that is not been touched, uh, we cannot say, oh, well, they didn't know, or we didn't, we want to make sure we're doing our due diligence too by taking them on a tour of our stuff and letting them see what all needs to be cut and also keep that log so that therefore when you're getting out something, when you're doing business, it's good to show people, hey, look, this is what they're doing. And then this might be easier for them to get the bid back when they have to bid again, because we see that they're doing the job somebody's been uh, keeping a law and it says, hey, they've done everything because they've been toured. So by them missing some of the stuff, I have to put that back on us because if we might, I don't know if you guys gave them a tour of everything to show them where our we lines did. are. Okay. So we did. Then, we, gave okay. A tour, we gave them a tour before the bid and we gave them a tour after the bid. Okay. So that goes back to them. Then. So we did do our due diligence. Okay. So I would like, you know, maybe that information could be shared with the facilities committee as far as a law when there's some hit and misses so that therefore we can, you know, so that therefore we know that it has been addressed and, uh, you know, we know that you're telling them, but if a lot of us are seeing the same thing that we need to uh, figure something out on that. Okay. Sure. Uh, all right. Thank you, sir. Uh, moving right along. Uh, I want to get a building uh, to 4.7 uh, building updates. We'll start with the old Baptiste building. Uh, well, I don't know what the old Baptiste building is. Uh, what's going on with it? Are we, uh, we haven't got an update on them. We were supposed to be in some type of uh, uh, agreement with someone. What's going on? Or is there anything going on? Are we still Do you doing mean Old anything? Smith Hill? Oh, uh, Old Smith Hill. Okay, you talk well. about Old Smith yeah, it should be Old okay. Smith L. That, that, I'll take that. Carla, should we be Carla, should we be talking about real estate during an open session? Um, we're probably better having that conversation in closed session. Okay. Right. If you want to put it on the closed session um, agenda sure. for Thursday, that would be a um, a more appropriate place for that conversation. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Don is on the on the thing. She probably heard everything we stated. Okay, can we, so we can't talk about Johnson or Simonton either? No, I think it's best to have those conversations all in closed session. Okay, well, we can talk about Union Point, can't we? Well, here's what I found out about Union Point. So the history of it is what I tried to find out. So I, had, I called the person who probably, I called two people. One, I called Chris Kahagan. Mm -hmm. uh, was with the board during the time period that Union Point was in the district. So here's what Chris told me. Uh, Chris told me back in 2003, 2004, that building was being um, used by, was being rented by a church. And the church was reporting all kinds of faulty problems with the, with the building, like electrical, plumbing, all kinds of problems. So, uh, the buildings and grounds people back then, back in 2003, 2004, went to the building to try to look at some of the issues and found that there was multiple issues with the building. Uh, at that point, whoever was in charge of my position at that time called uh, architect and engineers to come in to look at the building. Uh, and Chris was telling me at that time they found that the building was need to, need to be shut down, that it was completely unsafe. And so at that time, he remembers writing a letter to the, to the uh, uh, church at that time saying they could no longer be in the building because it was so unsafe, uh, according to the engineers and architects that worked for the district at that time. And since, and since 2004, he thought the building has sat empty since that time period and had not been touched. So um, if, he remembers, and of course, we've been in there too. Uh, when I first got this position, I, I got to see, look through, it through, the, through the windows and through the doors. I wasn't allowed to go in because the floors were completely unsafe to walk on. Uh, the building you know, has been abandoned for 
15 years at least. And uh, it was completely unsafe then, it's completely unsafe now. Um, it's in terrible shape. Uh, we lock it up and, and uh, we put padlocks on the doors and everything like that to make sure no one can go in there so it isn't, so no one can get hurt. Um, so it's a very, very dangerous uh, place to be inside of and we try to stay out of it. The other person I talked to is Dave Inky and Dave Inky is uh, one of our maintenance crew guys that has been with us for over 25 years. And Dave mm -hmm. said, basically told me the same story. He said it was just in terrible condition uh, back in the low 2000s is what he remembers. And he says, I know they basically condemned it uh, without actually condemning it. So, um, and he said, no one's been in that building since. And he's, he locked it up back in that time period. And he said, we basically try to keep everybody out of it. And where does that property sit again? It's right next to Freedom Arkley. It's on the uh, east side of Freedom Arkley. Uh, now, are we keeping up the maintenance on it as far as cutting grass or anything? Well, there's grass around it. It's part of the Freedom Arkley property, so it's being cut and everything, yeah. Okay. But the building itself, the inside of it, we don't, we don't do anything with it. And we and can't that, condemn We can't condemn it? Well, I, it's my understanding that it's got a historical uh, clarification. Chris thought, Chris Kahagan thought that it had an historical marking on it, meaning it had been through the Historical Society. And when you do that, when you do that, and they did this way back in uh, the early, early 1990s, I believe, or mid 1990s, he thought, then you can't condemn those buildings. You have to refurbish them or leave them as is. So uh, he said there was some legal precedence that goes along with when they become an historical building. But he thought, we're not sure though. Is yeah, that he didn't know, he couldn't remember. He okay, was gonna well, try to look at paperwork from the past and send it to me. And Dan, I don't know if I still have it or not, but he said, I'll look for it. And if I find it, I'll get it to you. But I haven't heard from him about it. We might want to check on that. And so that therefore we'll know, so when these uh, things come up again, when people ask us these questions, we'll be ready, being more proactive on that one. All right. Okay, we'll move right along uh, to 4.0 gates and security. On this one, um, basically this is, um, you know, and I created this, um, you know, I got a call from board president, um, President Briggs, and also spoke to you, Vice President Reagan, with concerns about district school parking lots and playgrounds. Um, we had a few incidents where some people had driven behind buildings and caused mm -hmm. some disturbances, um, throw some trash and so forth. So um, Mr. Weekly and I talked and we made a couple of visits, not just one, we made a couple of visits to every school, we made notes independently, uh, created this uh, memo, went back and forth between it, tried to make sure that we captured everything. And so if you look at this, what it does is it shows you like, for instance, here at Burke, there's three entrances into the cap, uh, campus. The North Gate's functional, uh, but it would need a lock and chain. The middle gate uh, never had any gate assembly and would need a full gate assembly. Um, the south entry gate is semi-functional, just has to be adjusted with a lock and chain. Uh, and then of course, in the front of Burke, there is no gate, the fence had been taken down. Um, so even when we do all this, somebody could still drive on the property. So we made a lot of just detailed notes on every property. What, um, and this is to me, to be honest, a starting point. This talks about everything from every building that we have, even the former administration center. Um, and so we have all these detailed notes mm -hmm. and then we've come back to saying as we start looking at these notes and really the situations that we're in there's some things that we have to consider as we start determining if we want to go forward and what we want to go forward with such as kind of what i mentioned before you know during the week we really cannot lock the gates because the trash pickup will just turn around if they can't get in uh food deliveries and milk so really most of this will be locking it up for like weekends and periods of long time when people are out, such as holidays, mm -hmm. uh, vacations. Mm -hmm. um, and then again, we start looking at the playground areas. 
We'd want to make sure that, you know, community members could still access those um, areas because if we had one question about like, for instance, the PIAC. If we're using PIAC funds, we believe we have to uh, allow access to the community um, to that facility, if nothing else. Yeah, it's, uh, the, it's a condition of, it's a condition of uh, agreeing to the funds. Yeah, well, I, well I'm, a, I'm aware of that, but you don't have to have it to whereas they're on the, uh, you know, they just go in and just uh, certain things can still be roped off. I mean, you know, so we can still rope football, off some of the other things. The football field would, cannot be. It would now have public access. No, I'm talking about the front of Ruskin and the things of that nature. We don't have to keep everything completely all the way open. That's what I'm talking about, Mr. Dr. Weekly. My fault. And so we, we kind of looked a little bit further because even if we do um, create gates on everything, um, we lock everything up, you know, we started talking and a lot of the damage that we've had over time hasn't been anybody really driving in. It's been, you know, kids basically going through and trans, you know, walking through, you know, around the building, throwing rocks and so forth, a lot of that kind of damage. So to be honest, this is where we started thinking about possibly uh, cameras and lighting might be a good um, solution. Uh, so we could get really good clear pictures of individuals as well as cars and so forth. Um, and again, this number four just talks about we have um, certain people uh, like HVAC, and like what happens if we had a building that caught on fire? You know, we have to. When there's a lot of things we have to make sure that the fire department uh, would have keys and so forth. So there's just some things we did get a bid and I didn't put attach it to this. And the reason I didn't attach it to this is because if we do put this out for a sealed bid, I didn't want anybody to kind of have a starting point, but uh, I will tell you, you know, basically we're talking about just gates. If we do a bare minimum of what's listed on this, we are talking somewhere in the neighborhood of a hundred thousand um, dollars. And to be honest, this is where we start talking about cameras, security lighting, that you know maybe a hybrid of all of this might be best based on the different buildings and location and we thought that this might be like you said instead of taking this out of our budget because we could list as possibly under security that whatever we end up with might be able to be put onto the bond issue well i'm glad that you guys have taken the time to finally uh come together as one and, and notice that the uh, those things are, are, are really necessary, especially during this time where our schools are out. And right now people are just all over the place in our schools. Uh, but I do want to say for what we do have, is there any way where the stuff that is functional, we can fu uh, make it a little function until we put that in the bond language? Is there any way to make those places like the ones that don't, that need a chain and a lock. Can we put the chain and the lock on there or have you already started doing that? We've already started doing that. Okay, so you so we could take all this off of the stuff that ha that is functional, correct? So th there's very little that's functional. I mean, very little. I think there was two buildings that had functional stuff. Uh, Ber Berg so, but, but I will tell you, you know, going through work, going through this walking it with um, Mr. Weekly, we got out of the car, we examined things, and even some of the ones that quote can kind of lock with the chain mm -hmm. and a lock that would still be temporary because they need to be fixed. I mean, to be honest, right, right, right. So That's that would be a temporary. That would be a temporary fix, you know, at best. Right, because plus, if you think plus about like like at Smith Hale, they still had two that we could possibly close off, but the other entry was wide open and had nothing. So even if we were to get the, temp the two or three that were somewhat functional, they're still gonna be wide open on the other end with another entry and exit. So uh, Burke was the same way. We had two we thought we could maybe make work temporarily, but the other one's wide open, there's nothing. There's, no, there's never been a gate there. So people are still gonna get in is what I'm saying. So we, even if we temporarily put some of the gates together, there's still another entry and exit to that building that has nothing there. But I think it'll make it a more noticeable when things are kind of locked. 
if I see you driving a truck over the uh, over the uh, over the uh, parking lot and the gate is locked up, I'm gonna be more suspicious than to see without nothing locked up. That's just me. Uh, maybe I think too much, but uh, I'm just saying if we can make those things that we can be functional with a gate and a lock. Let's make those functional. And I heard you say that, Dr. Whitley, Dr. Weekly, that you guys are going to make those things that are functional that we can do just for a temporary fix. I heard you say that that's something that you guys have already started on, correct? Yes. Okay. Well, yeah, we're, we're locking them. We can lock them, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Because I know I went up to, I went up to Ruskin and I shut the gate. And I don't know if that's in the front there. And I shut it. I noticed it had a lock on there. I was going to lock the lock with the link, but I said no because I don't know if you guys had keys to it. Because I know it could be it, the lock was open, whereas the chain could have went and locked it, but I didn't. So I left it as is. But I closed the gate so they couldn't come up front there in the front of the, of Ruskin. So I do know that much. So I am glad that you guys are are doing that. That's just music to my ears because. We've been speaking about it a lot. And that's just music to my ears that we are getting it done. That just makes me happy. And I'm so happy today. I, I love <laughs> to hear that. I am. I'm happy to hear when we're doing good things and, and we're fixing things. And we're well, making I will tell you, as we went through, you know, we found several properties that had n no gates whatsoever. I mean, nothing. Mm -hmm. yeah. so that, that goes back to, you know, again, some of those, the expense of the gate, it might be better to um, have cameras put in with lighting so we can get, kind of see, like, for instance, you know, one that comes to mind is Freedom Markley. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I don't know if we truly need gates in front of Freedom Markley or maybe just cameras to monitor the situation. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know um, what next steps might be. You know, again, Mr. Weekly and I have already kind of gone through this. If we need to have a task force to kind of get together and try to really examine each one to get suggestions. And then of course, you know, once we get more pricing in as far as cameras, you know, I think, you know, it is a process to figure out exactly because we want to do it right the first time. We don't want to put in gates and then say, oh no, we want to put cameras too and we spend twice the cost. You know, we want to make sure that we have the whole plan in place before we start it. So- Well, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to suggest that at this point, uh, Vice President Reagan and Di uh, Director Carter and uh, Skinner and Weekly, that a task force be put together to kind of assess what is in the best interest of the district. Uh, financially, as it relates to our physical uh, budget, but also uh, keeping security as one of our number one focuses, a task force would not be a bad idea. So I think that is a good suggestion. Okay. I, I, will, I will get somebody to create a task force um, and give them a course, you know, the start that we started with this and um, get them working. And, you know, we will report back um, next month. And also with that task force, uh, since we're going to bring that and put it into the bond language also, have everything be looked at in our schools to our school cameras inside too. We want to make sure that those are working too, since we're trying to build these, uh, we're trying to build these little safety things, safety vestibles in our schools. Also put that in there too, because we don't want to keep nothing out. Since we're doing it all, you can put them all in there together and hopefully put it into that bond language. The gates, your lights, your cameras, your action. Let's roll. Let's roll, baby, roll. Okay. All right. Anything else on that? All right. Nothing said. All right. Let's move it along. We move it along. Uh, Four point nine compass uh, wall update. Yeah. So we have had several contractors out to look at the compass walls uh, in the upstairs, and uh, I feel like we have a good application. Uh, Dr. Skinner, if you'll go to the, uh, if you'll go to the other attachments, go to the first one, DIRT. So the DIRT Corporation is a company that deals with uh, flexible wall spacing for corporations and uh, they do some schools, but they're really flexible learning, flexible wall systems are really designed for building, you know, businesses. Um, I had to take a look, I, actually they were a suggestion of, uh, 
uh, Hollis and Miller said that they had used them actually for their facility to create some flexible wall space for their buildings. And so I had them come in along with two other companies. And if Dr. Skinner, if you'll scroll down to the picture, it's, I think it's the very last page. Yeah, right there. So as you'll see, we wanted to create a space that not only has some solid pieces to it, but also has some flexibility as well. So on the middle part, what you'll see is really what we call, you know, the barn door issue where we can expand those out, put them back in. They're double-sided, so they're very soundproof. Uh, they also, obviously they go all the way to the ceiling. So, you know, vi you know vis visually, you know, people can only see things if, if you have the doors open. Uh, obviously the solid sides on the side, those white pieces have the whiteboard parts where the kids can write on them, which is something we wanted as well. And something curriculum instruction wanted as well. The, on the far right, you'll see kind of a silver uh, doorway. That's called a pivot door. And the pivot door is required by law due to the uh, fire code issue. So the pivot door uh, is a, will look like a normal door. It's a pass through that also has some sound barrier to it as well. And it's also at the very end. So kids will probably not be able to see each other at all. They have to be almost up against the wall to see each other. So this, this actual application we feel like is the best application out there because it provides a flexibility of opening it up if they wanted an open classroom and closed when it has the soundproof and the writing on the walls that we all wanted. So, and at the price we wanted. Uh, DIRT is also a, a national cooperative as well. So we get special pricing from them. Uh, the pricing for this type of setup for all three classrooms uh, come in a little over 39,000, which is about where we thought we would come in. Uh, some of the other companies were a little over 40,000, the other two, uh, dirt was not only the cheapest, but also probably the best product and the best uh, company to work with on this. Well, that sounds great, uh, Dr. Weekly and Vice President Reagan and Dr. Skinner. I just would caution us at this point to spend any additional dollars. I hope that what we are doing tonight is gathering enough information so that as we strategically move forward, uh, we can implement some of these things, especially once the bond passes, and we hope that that is the case. And that's, and that's the same with me because I would like to be cautious. We have already talked about these walls uh, anyway, and especially as we have already have renovated compass anyway, uh, over there at the school, it's been it's been a lot of money spent over there uh, just to come back and put these walls in for thirty nine thousand uh, dollars. Yeah, I'm along with President Briggs. I would like to be cautious on that, so that therefore we uh, look at it and hopefully we'll come up with some better uh, things. Hopefully, this bond will, as we stated, will be able to get it passed. So uh, I do appreciate that. Go ahead. So President Reagan, I was under the impression this is what you wanted done this summer. Was that correct? I mean, that well, was several months, so I'm confused yeah, as seven. to for the bond. Well, we would, want to, we would want to be cautious as we have not, as we saw, we had to spend some money over at Irvin on a playground that we were not looking forward to doing. Uh, and this was before we talked about all these things. Uh, we look at our fund balance. We're trying to protect our fund balance, Dr. Weekly. I understand what you're stating, but we really kind of never heard nothing about it. That's the reason why I wanted to listen to hear about what you had. And so therefore, moving forward, the uh, next uh, board might uh, go ahead and take you up on your offer. You know, But at this time, I just wanted to know the update of what you guys found out because we had been talking about it. Uh, the, I know the principals and the teachers want it, but at the same sense, 39000 at a school that we had invested a whole bunch of money, which I said before, to me, is kind of, uh, you know, uh, I'll, use, I'll use a great word now today. I just don't think right now would be the time. So uh, that's just well, me. I will, uh, I will say this funding-wise, I have enough in my capital budget for 1920 to complete this project and not affect the fund balance. Yeah, I'm not in support of that, uh, Vice President yeah. Reagan. Oh, I, I don't know who that. pushed this initiative to yeah. uh, 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 do that, do this at this point. So 
Yeah. Uh, I'm not in. I'm. I'm. What, what we wanted to do when we first came, uh, President Briggs, is that uh, this was brought to us by numerous of teachers last year. Uh, we've been talking about this. This is how far it goes back. And I don't know whoever else might have uh, recognized that here we are, we have kids that are able to see each other in a classroom in open space, like we live, you know, how the people like open space houses. And a lot of teachers are complaining about the noise and how t uh, kids are being distracted with each other. Uh, at that time, we were trying to see how much uh, it would be to get some walls. Uh, Director Carter and myself stated, why couldn't we just put up a wall, uh, just build a regular wall with some sheetrock? And, and, and Dr. Weekly was stating, well, that would look pretty good, you know, as far as that. And we wouldn't, at first, these prices of these walls have been traumatic. They've been up, way, way up. And then now this is probably the lowest, but at this time, like I stated, with all the things that we were not looking forward to. And that's why you have to be a governance of your money. Steward, good steward, we, at this time, I'm not in it neither, because I didn't know we would have to, as once again, here we had Irvin, we put a new playground down that we were spending money on. So at this um, time, okay, I'm not sorry. in reception. Go ahead, Mr. Well, Parker, I think at the time, Mr. Reagan, when we discussed this, when we took our tours and visited those schools, it was chaotic in those classrooms. And like we said, teachers was overwhelmed. There were students that were getting distracted because they were all in one classroom and there was no divider to separate it. But as we discussed, we were wanting to get um, just a simple divider, just something simple. We were asking for like, um, I think it was like a pool screen. Was it like a screen just to separate them? And we said, mm -hmm. if you don't need anything fancy, but just something simple just to separate it. And I think that's when uh, Ms. Franklin came up with the suggestion that you guys were looking for some type of boards where they can write and draw on. And then we bring it back to the place stating that, you know, we don't need anything fancy. If we can't afford that type of things at that moment, we don't need anything that we can draw on. And we said only get what we can afford. And we kind of agreed on just looking at something basic. That way we can just shut those classrooms off and separate it. That way the kids are able to learn without getting distracted. So the extra stuff that we're looking at, I believe we just talked about tonight with the writing on the board. I believe we're, I don't think we all decided on that part because that's a little steep, 39965 Can we, is that our only option? Have we weighed any other options on finding other bids? Have we tried something less, just something basic? Yeah, we can put up drywall walls. This is just not what curriculum instruction about was. Dry, no, not drywall walls. I'm not looking at that. Uh, you remember when we spoke about the screen? They're like, oh, the biters. I've seen them there at Compass before. Um, my son went there years ago. It's like a divider. You can pull them back. It's like a, just um, a sliding divider. You know what I'm talking about? Like the screen thing that you can kind of pull back and forth. I've seen them yeah, there before. I think I sliding doors. About. Sliding doors, kind of, yeah, something like that. But I've seen it before. I've seen it there before. So I was just kind of wondering if we can stick to something basic like that, just something simple, but at least kind of just shut them off where they're not looking at each other or getting distracted. You, you know, if I may, um, you know, kind of give my two cents on this. This is one of those ones that it has been a, a challenge since basically um, – you know, inception, and it's become more of a challenge now that it is more of a traditional um, neighborhood high school or elementary versus the choice school. And, and and I will tell you, it is it is better to quote do it right the first time than to come in and to take things down, add things. And there were a couple other quotes I believe that Mr. Uh, Weekly had with this one. This happens to be the best, most affordable, and the one that we're recommending. And, you know, I, again, I, we really like for it to go to consent for the board meeting next week, but if nothing else, we would just could bring it to the board and have everybody else look at it and give their opinion. But I do think this is the right time to do it as well because we do need to do it during the summer when there's no students there. So it'll be in uh, place for next year. And, and with the new virus going around, Hopefully this could also help contain viruses, keep them separate, um, and make sure that students are safe as well. Someone, someone, sorry to cut you off, Dr. Someone needs to mute their phone, because we can't hear. Well, 
Well, right now, I understand about the COVID, and I understand what you guys are saying. But as a good steward, and, and just me personally, Director uh, Carter, President Briggs, just as being good stewards as the Board of Education, as we know our fund balance, and we've seen how we have had it. Uh, we are trying to push a bond right now at this time. Uh, we're trying to get things done. And uh, so right now, I just don't feel uh, comfortable bringing that to the full board at this time. That's just me. Uh, I'm one of three. I think, do I have to take a vote on that later or not? If I don't, uh, 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 Ms. Johnson, uh, Attorney Johnson. Well, I mean, if you want to move it to the full board, then you'll want to take a vote to move it to the full board. Um, I mean, if you're not planning on taking any action on it, you don't necessarily have to. Um, well, let me take that back. Uh, Mr. Weekly, have you made a, is this a, is this a recommendation? Yes, it is. Okay, so then, yeah, you guys do need to take some action on it one way or the other. It's either, you know, you want to move it to the full board or you want to, um, you know, you, you don't want to move it to the full board. What, um, you could table it. There are a multitude of things that you can do. Um, but if it's coming as a recommendation to the committee, then the committee needs, needs to take some action on it. Okay. And, and, and uh, Vice President Reagan, again, I, you know, yes, I just would urge that, you know, very similar to like the Hope Hangout and the EAC, even though the EAC decided they didn't want to support it, they wanted the full board to hear it. So we still took it to the full board, even though the EAC committee wouldn't support it and just to let everybody else hear it. So it, it, even if you don't want to move it to consent items because you don't want to do it right now, I would urge you at least to move it to the um, board meeting next week and let everybody, you know, at least express their opinion. Well, at this time, I don't feel comfortable just being a good steward and especially knowing what we have been going through through the times. I don't feel, like I said, I'm one of seven. I will take a motion. Uh, I will put uh, before we do any more, I will get a motion. If you guys want to present anything else at this time, then I will call for a motion from the chair. So if any, Dr. Weekly or Dr. Skinner, if you guys have anything else that you want to say about this at this time. My question, I guess I have a question. So if we don't move on this tonight, what's going to happen once school starts back? Like the kids are still going to be in that environment where they don't have a screen to separate them and it's still going to be what it was last year. I think I'm a little concerned about, okay, if we don't act on this now, then what time frame or when can we act on this? Are they going to go through another school year like without anything that's separate them, or we're going to think of something else or less, you know, affordable? And see here, and that's the thing, that's the tricky part, Director Carter, where I'm at, because none of us can tell when this COVID is going to be over with. You know what I'm saying? And that's the problem that I'm having, because even if we pass it tonight or say we'll take it to the full board, it's still, we don't know when they're going to be able to, you know, go ahead and uh, going back start to construction yeah, on it too. Right. So you can still be looking at, you can still be looking at, let's see, what is this? Uh, May and June, July, we still not working, still doing stuff June, July, August. By the time we get three, because you're going to have to get three different bids too for it. I understand they can't, go ahead. I was going to say they're attached. The no, three, three bids, bids are attached. attached. Oh, I didn't see them down there. My bad. I got three bids. We, we only brought up the one that we wanted to recommend. But I, I, I think our state states, we got to list all three of them, don't we? Or y'all can just recommend all They're listed there. Um, oh, he said, he said. See, they're, they're, they're right here. Okay. We just, see, again, we, have, we, yeah. we didn't want to recommend the other two, so we didn't actually show them. We, we just only clicked on the one that we want to recommend. Oh, see, I didn't see all that. I don't have that, I don't think, on mine. Let me see. If I could do it, okay. Well, uh, I, I I mean, you know, go ahead, President Briggs. Is that you? No, that was me. Um, oh, okay. Go so, uh, Director Carter, let me try and address your question. Um, I do have something to say. Sorry, can you just give me a second? Well, I'm I'm really confused absolutely. that I understand that we have these distractions in a classroom and. The original design of Compass was designed the way that it was designed, and I don't understand why those things wasn't taken into consideration yeah. prior to. So That's I'm a little, I'm, I am a little perplexed with this whole conversation, Vice President Reagan and Dr. Weekly and Skinner, 
Well, President Briggs, yeah. let me let me interact. Let me just interact right quick. We we uh, Director Carter and I said the same thing last year. We didn't understand why it wasn't taken in consideration either. But it was caused the principal stated that he wanted it or something like that. They didn't think I'm at, in terms. I'm at no. That. I'm not yeah, going to continue to entertain yeah. this conversation. So if, if there's a motion on the floor, then strategically the district and administration has to figure out something because we're just spending money and stuff. Yeah. That's the problem I had too. So the chair, go ahead, Ms. Ms. Johnson, to uh to talk to uh, I was going to try and um, address Ms. Carter's question. Um, if I understood your your question, Director Carter, you're asking if you all don't act today, um, will this will the situation that currently exists um, still exist? Uh, so the answer to the question is um, yes. I mean, you've got a you've got a recommendation to do something, and so if you don't move it forward or don't act on it in any way, then then your current situation will stand until some other proposal is brought either to this committee or to the full board. Um, so, you know, I mean, you, you certainly can move it to the full board for full board discussion if you want to do that. Um, and if you don't want to do that, then it's, then it's going to die here um, until either someone on this committee brings it back up again, or it's brought to the full, somebody from the full board puts it on the agenda. A board member can put it on the, on the board agenda, um, even without a recommendation from, um, even without a recommendation from this board. Um, sorry. Um, <laughs> um, so you've got, you've got, those options. You can either um, move it forward to the full board for consideration without a recommendation from this committee. You can leave it here at this committee and wait for um, either some additional action. Um, you can make a request of the administration to um, do something different. Um, but if you do nothing, it's going to stay in the status that it's in now. Does that make sense? It does. Okay. So since there has been a recommendation made by uh, leadership, I'm, uh, the chair is seeking a uh, motion for item 4.9 coppice wall update. Uh, once again, the chair is seeking a motion for uh, item 4.9 compass wall update to bring to the full board. I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. Okay. I move that we, was it, I don't move item, was it 4.9? Sorry. What item was that? Yes, ma'am. Was it 4.9? Yes, ma'am. Okay. I motion that we move item 4.9 to the full board. For recommendation. Uh oh. For discussion, are you asking it to just go to the full board for discussion? So there's no recommendation from this committee, but you want to move it to the full board for as a discussion item at the meeting. Is that your motion? I'm, oh, okay. Let me recite it. Let me read. Uh, now I'm just trying to get clarification from Dr. Car from Director Carter. Yeah. Is that, that, is that what is that what we agreed on that we're going to bring it to the full board right or for discussion or we're just going to die it off right here i think that's what we need to figure out yeah, well, my, well my motion what what will happen is i'm i'm gonna seek the motion i'll get a second we'll vote if the yeas win and the nays uh if the no's don't we don't move it if the yeas do then we move it so that's how that works. that that's how that works so director carter as i understand your motion your motion is to move this item to the full board for discussion yeah, I want to move it to the okay. board for discussion. Okay, so that's the motion on the floor. And it requires a second. Okay, am I, uh, is there someone that's intending to make a second? If there isn't, then the motion's going to die. It's only board members can make a second, right? Correct.
Well, the motion is dead because I've given each and every one uh, a time to say something because I was not going to second the motion. I just want to make sure. So there is a first for this motion. <laughs> and so, yes, if there's no second to the motion, then the motion um, will die. And, you know, again, there doesn't have to be action taken on it um, any further. There's been a motion that's been made and it, it didn't receive a second. So the motion is going to die. It's die. Okay. But there's but now it's time for discussion. Now it's time for yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Now it's time for discussion. Hello. 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 President Briggs, we do hear. Hello. Go ahead. I'm sorry, I was on mute. If there's another motion that you want to make in order to get something else on the table to discuss, um, the floor is open for you to make a motion um, that would require a second, and then you could have some discussion on it, and then you can vote it up or down. Um, but you know, the floor is open for a motion on on the issue. Are you talking to me? Yes, ma'am. I thought you were asking a question about discussion. No, that was well, Miss. Uh, that was President Briggs. That was me. That's President Briggs. I, 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 I believe after a motion is taken, that you can, there's, you can still allow time for a, a brief discussion. I know we had some discussion prior to, so it did not pass. I do have something to say on this issue. On this. Yeah, or do we? we still or is not necessary. Okay. No, that's fine. If you, I mean, if there's still some conversation that needs to occur on this issue before another motion comes before the floor, that's fine. You can do that. I think that it's, a, I think it's important that as we move forward with majority of our learning spaces, most of our learning spaces, that the administration assess the learning environment. So to make a clear determination, if we're going to do the cooperative or group learning environment, is that conducive to the learning environment? Are kids and teachers actually benefiting from it? So I, I, what I don't want the district to continue to do is implement an educational strategy and then try to improve it when we realize that there are some hiccups with what the initial recommendation was. So that is one reason why I'm not, I'm not moving on this right now. I'm just not gonna do it. Not for $35,000, not for a dollar. I think that the administration, whether it's the current or new or the future administration really assess each and every learning environment so that it meets the 21st century student needs. President Briggs, you bring up a great point. Uh, Dr. Uh, Skinner, you and your team, uh, I think we should make a charge to you guys to really look at that. Uh, that is a valid point uh, because we don't want to just keep on building things and then tearing them back down or taking uh, uh, different, uh, uh, I can't get it all out, but I know what I want to say. But basically, yes, yeah, so I would, I would piggyback off with uh, President Briggs on that because we don't want to get into just buying stuff and saying we're going to do this learning today and then tomorrow we say, oh, well, that didn't work. Uh, even though we should have went a little farther and looked around, you know, we don't want to get into that and spending money and back and forth. Uh, I think we've uh, shown enough of that already. So if we could uh, look at that, what type of learnings are we going to do for our district, for our students? not for anyone what our students can grasp to and, and i will well, oh, okay. say that you know when that was built and when we did this um last bond you know it was because it was built for a choice school that was looking at the four c's it was looking at to create collaborate communicate with each other so the way it was designed was exactly for what it was intended however now that it is a traditional neighborhood school the design does not follow function as it did before. It was perfectly fine when it was a choice school, but now that it's not, 
uh, adjustments need to be made to accommodate the new learning environment and the new um, you know, type of school that it is? Well, I thought that we may all choose uh, a, a part of our strategic plan that I know we just approved when we closed schools was to make all schools a choice school. So are we make them traditional schools, Dr. Skinner, or are we making them choice schools? I just need to make sure that we are communicating the same message. Well, it is, it is a neighborhood school. And so you're putting more students into the building. And so the, again, you're still able to have a choice school as far as having steam um, as well as that goes. However, with the technology and STEAM, that's fine, but you don't have those collaborative spaces anymore because you're putting more students into the building. This is the same thing with uh, Millennium. Millennium had similar concerns and walls were added to Millennium to address it. So with that being, so I guess the, with that being said, I think the question, <laughs> Are we going to? Are all our schools supposed to be all choice schools? It, from my understanding, all that's our schools the are supposed to focus with STEAM and a 24th century learning approach. Yes. Okay. So, but when you again, when you have so many people into a building, and again, when they're you know face to face like that, and you've been in the building and you know, again, it was just not quote designed for the method that we're using right now. We, we, are, we are still being able to, if you saw the maker space that we're building on it, it's, it's just not quite being able to use 100% efficiently as it was designed. So I think I, what I'm still piggybacking off of is, if we're not gonna make them, if we're not gonna do anything about it now because of the pricing on it, it's still gonna remain the same, which I thought last year we decided after hearing those teachers voice their opinions, seeing how chaotic those classes were yes this is very expensive but in the same as it has to get done one way or another those kids cannot continue to go to school and be distracted and i don't i think i just don't see how the administration team can really do anything about it unless we get those sliding doors i wish we can look at finding a cheaper bid maybe somebody with a cheaper price but either way it goes it's gonna have to get done because like i said we can't go another school year with those teachers and kids, they're, they're overwhelmed. When I went in there, they was overwhelmed. Their heads was all over the place. And like I said, I know firsthand, my son went there. I don't understand how you can even learn in an environment like that when you're too busy seeing kids and two teachers teaching at one time and kids looking at other kids. You know, it's a distraction. I just figure if we can get it done, let's get it done. But if we can get it done for a cheaper price, that'd be okay. I just don't want them to have to deal with that a whole nother year. I move that we that we do an assessment of those learning spaces because what I believe I just heard, my motion is going to be very clear. I move that we do an assessment of the new learning spaces since the original design was to be a choice school. Now they are a neighborhood school with more students in a classroom. I think we need to make a motion to assess those learning spaces to make sure that they adequately meet the needs of the new uh, the the new to to accommodate the increase in classroom sizes because I believe you can't do one space and not do another so there needs to be an assessment done on those learning communities. Well, here's the question then, President Bridge, because we're doing discussion. How many of these uh, schools are like this right now, Dr. Skinner? Um, I'm going to let Mr. Weekly kind of address it, because I believe there are other schools that we're going to have to um, look at. Oh, as well. Oh, Lord. See, this is, that's what President uh, Briggs Mr. is Mr. Weekly, about. could you kind of address that, please, on um, some of the older buildings that had those collapsible walls that we have to go in and address as well? Yeah. And let me work. work. Eagles, let me Eagles interrupt line. for just one second, Mr. Weekly. Sure. I'm sorry, let me interrupt for one second. You've got a, a pending motion on the floor that doesn't have a second, and so I'd like to get just so Get that one out the way, right. yeah. Let's, let's get a second on that, and then we can go into some discussion on it. Is there a second yeah. for this motion? Which one? The one I uh, put out there first? No, the one that President Briggs just made. 
Well, to have, to have an conducted assessment of the learning spaces. Um, I, and I'm guessing, President Briggs, your, your motion was for assess the learning spaces throughout the district, not just within that school. I want a clarification on that. President Briggs. Uh, yes, it's, it's an assessment of all those types of learning spaces, because what we don't want to have occur is that we do compass and then we already know that there are five to six more schools who have similar learning spaces. Our example would be Santa Fe. Okay. And I believe assessment so that's most that's part of the bond, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct, Mr. Weekly? I don't know what space you're talking about. I said, I believe uh, an assessment of the entire district and learning space was done as part of the bond as you were looking at things to quote, um, bring forth for the bond. Correct. Oh, okay, then, well, if y'all. The assessment of the learning space has been shared multiple times. And uh, so I'm, I'm you know, th th this is, the, if the assessment is that this space is not working, then this is the solution. That's why I'm, this is kind of confusing for me. We assess that it isn't working and this is the solution for it. Um, so the assessment's been done that we all know it isn't working as well as we want it to work. This is the solution for that assessment. Are there other places? How many, other, or how many other places, Dr. Weekly, are similar to this one? Because if we well, address yeah. one situation. Right. And again, it goes back to that so whole thing that I've been saying for the last two years. We have an assessment that Hollis and Miller and I did of inside and outside the building, including learning spaces, where it's $108 million. We can't do it all at one time, which is why we weren't going to start with option one with this bond, because there are internal improvements that address learning spaces that we've already assessed. For instance, Ingalls. Ingalls has that flexible wall that uh, Director Carter is talking about. They do not mm -hmm. like them. They want us to remove them, okay? They want us to get rid of them. They want us to put up a different now, structure. Now, where is that? Like oh. Oh, sorry, go right ahead. I'm trying to figure out where that's located at so I can vision it in my head at Ingalls. There's one, there's, it's by the special education wall, right across from the cafeteria. Right across from the, by the cafeteria. Wall. Cafeteria. Yeah, there's two or three classrooms right along there that are right in a row that have the um, expanding walls and they do not like them and want them removed. Uh, oh. So this is a space, this is this type of application would be perfect for what they're needing. And so as I share this with principals, this is what they want. I mean, this is the, this is the solution they want. Uh, I shared it with Ms. Horde, the principal of Compass, and she is very excited about this application. Uh, and these are the types of applications I'm sharing with principals that have these other issues that you're talking about. And so the assessment's been done. It's been done for years. We did it in 2015. I revisited it in 2018. We, Justin and I did it again in fall of 2019. We have that data. It's already there and we've shared it multiple times. The, the issue is, is that can we, uh, can we do the application over time? This is a very good reasonably cost application. Is it cheap? No, it's not. But it is a reasonable application that principals like, teachers like, and, and is for, for the cost is a good cost. Um, and it's a long-term application. You know, this is, this is a long-term application. That's the, one of the reasons why we went to this application because it is flexible in nature. You can have the doors shut all the time if you want to, or open them up all the time if you want to. So that's, that's the beauty of this. We wanted a flexible learning uh, application so it has a long-term use down the road, not a short-term use. So it doesn't matter what programs you have in there, this application is gonna work for a myriad of, of, of programs. So Mr. Weekly, I think my question is, now I'm kind of going back thinking, we are investing, this is a pricey, and, but as we're investing this money into Compass, because first off, things didn't go the way it should. We should have kind of thought about it a little more before we did this because now we're looking at investing in these walls that costing us, like you say, 39,000. But what about our other schools that you mentioned that also need the work done to it? Because I'm feeling like 
we can invest all of our money into one school and give them the luxury. And we have older schools such as Ingalls, um, I believe Warford, other schools that lack all the other things that other schools have. Like, you know, I just want it to be around the board. If we're going to take this bond money, I think it needs to be equal. All the schools should get an upgrade. Everybody should be able to have the same thing. I just don't want to keep investing our money into some of these schools that already had money invested in and have newer things. And then all of our other schools are looking old and they need to be uh, upgraded badly. And um, Ingalls is one of them and Warford is one of them. You know, they all need uh, upgrade, but we need to focus on our other schools too. I don't want to leave them behind. I, I totally agree with you. And Justin totally agrees with you too, which is why we've devised option one of the bond the way we've devised it. It touches every single building. Uh, and that's exactly what we want. And this, this particular application is only applicable to a few buildings because not every building has those open spaces like that. There are just right. a couple of buildings that have that. Ingalls is one of them, and it's only a couple of classrooms. Uh, so please understand that this particular item that we're talking about tonight is just in just a few buildings, not in all. Uh, but option one of the bond uh, that Justin has been presenting and that everyone seems to be in favor of is the one that touches every single building that you're talking about. And he, reached, he stated that at the last meeting. So all these improvements that we're doing with the bond will touch every single building. Okay. So, potentially we, so potentially we could just let that go for, uh, that could be something that's included in the budget for the, uh, Burke then. Burke and, I mean, compass. I, I, it's so many compasses and so many Burks. I can't wait till we get some type of identity, but make a long story short, we can let compass compass is option one has the goal is for each principal to get with you guys to let them know here's what we need these are our priorities so really tonight uh we really don't really have to recommend that because you already put it in there so maybe dobbs i mean Dobbs, uh, lord forgive me compass uh can say hey look mr weekly since this is what we want in our school, we'll use this budget of our money, other bond, and we'll use it for those doors. So they'll be able to still get it if they say that in the bond. Is that what I'm understanding today? I'm confused by your question. Do you mean okay, here's, you want let me, let me, okay, so, okay, here's what I'm saying. Each principal has a uh, thing of what they want you guys with the bond money that we had discussed. Each principal is stating what they would like to get improved into their school, correct? Yeah, we're sharing with them option one, and then and we're going over the assessment that we've done and right. saying, what is a problem to you? So correct. tonight, you guys brought us a recommendation of $40,000. dollars 39 that's not true, 40000 tax. 40000 I'm rounding it up. So $40,000, I can say, hey, look, Mr. Weekly, I'm the principal over at, uh, hypothetically, I'm the principal over here at uh, Compass today. So some of the things, since the facilities committee is not going to review this $30,000, uh, $40,000 that we could spend on our boards, that would be something I would like to put in for my option one. We could do that? Yeah. They could do that. Okay. So, but Mr. Reagan, okay. one thing about this is the bond will not go until August. This work needs to be done this summer. Otherwise, as Ms. Director Carter has said, our students will come right back into school exactly the way they left it, and this won't have a chance to get done probably for another year. But here's the now, thing: if we if we if we move forward with this, it can be addressed, get done, and again, some of the other situations that need to quote be upgraded have something that is in place right now that allow those schools to function better. This is something that is a need immediately for Compass. I think we spoke to Justin about something about, you know, if we do something, uh, if we was to start any type of construction, I think we talked about that too. Uh, how would it impact? So I think that was something. So if the money was saying, huh, it wouldn't, it, that's what we said. So it if, if we, right. So basically, if, if the money is here, it's going to start construction or whatever has to happen. So whether they lose six months, four months, it's already, we've already been out of school already. We don't know when we're going to return. So by the time they get back, regardless of when this, whatever passes, they're still going to be losing that time regardless. That's all I'm saying. 
maybe I'm not looking at it, but I'm looking at it like, hey, let's spend this money. If we got a bond, we're going to promote our bond. First of all, we want to try to do this in November. We want to go ahead and say, hey, look, we want this in our school buildings. I have a certain percentage of money that I can only spend in my building. Why don't we just use that? That would be the proactive way to me to put that money, use it. That principal would have to say, hey, I know how much you all have allotted me to have. So therefore, I'm going to use that in my building. Why should we have to vote on something like this and we have a bond coming right up? That just doesn't make sense to me. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah Mr. Know, Reagan, I, I agree with you on that. That does yeah. make since option one was put yeah. out there because before right. I was, I mean, I just heard about option one, so I wasn't thinking. If option right. one is brought to the board, I mean, you know, put out there that the teachers, the principals get to, you know, suggest what they want to be done to their school. Why don't we wait and put that money and wrap it all right. into their right. budget and have right. to come off of more money? I, I, right. That makes more sense. I kind of, I like that see, idea because it does make that, more sense. And see, that gives them a more time, a principal to me, that gives me more time to make more assessment of the learning of this thing that we're going to do. Why should we see? That's how we get to spending money that we don't really need to spend. We got this bond coming up. Why? Why are we gonna take money out of our hands we don't even have? I mean, gentlemen and ladies. I mean, that's all I'm saying. You know, to me, you got. Let's promote our bond. Let's talk to our community. Let's get our community to come on out here and support this bond. That's what we ought to push for. As far as I'm concerned, uh, the motion is for us. Uh, I'm gonna move on along. This motion is dead. I don't think there's no more, to me, more, no more discussion. Do you guys have any more discussion, uh, no. Dr. Skinner? Dr. Weekly? I Dr. mean, Weekly, no. I, I just respectfully disagree with you, but I understand where you're coming from. I mean, it's just, to me, I mean, we, we're spending money. We got a bond. <laughs> I, mean, I, I understand, and I understand it could be put in option one because I understand right. what option one is. In fact, the bond is the next item. However, again, there's not an immediate opportunity to fix this. This has been a problem that has, as, as Director Carter had said, that, you know, has been brought to her attention, has been brought to your attention, has been brought to other board members' attention, and we have a chance to go ahead and address this now. Otherwise, it will probably go for another year before it, it is I, I, I don't doubt it. If the principal is doing their budget according to uh, option one, as we're stating, you guys, I would charge you guys to say, hey, look, this is what we, you, we know that you need in your building. That will be something that would be on your uh, scorecard for your building with the money that we're going to allot you for your building. That's all I'm saying. And, and, because, and I agree it can be done. But again, with the bond not going until August, um, and then you mean November? Done. It, no, it's it, we we right now have scheduled it for August at this point, I believe. Or, or uh, I say that that's what the bond language is going to go, and and we're going to discuss further. But uh, uh, yeah. Well, I'm just saying, Doctor Skinner. Go ahead. I just want to make sure that so President Briggs, and I'm not even sure that President Briggs is still on the on the on the phone, but she had a motion before. Um, it doesn't appear that that motion got a second, so. That um, that motion failed, and so at this point, just so that I can make sure that you all are clear on the action that you're taking, um, you're making the decision not to move forward with the administration's recommendation, which ultimately is going to mean that um, if you're if you're recommending that this be addressed in the bond, I think that just so that we're all on the same page, um, the the recommendation won't be acted on over the course of the summer and ready for the fall, but will instead go be pushed back to a later date and maybe as part of the bond. Yes, that, well, that's yeah, that, that's, that sounds good to me, but you know, it was Dr. Weekly who stated to President Briggs that they have already did this assessment already. And that is part of, uh, in some of the bond language, I'm thinking, uh, for what they have said, because I think he said it was 181 million if we was to do all of it, according to what Doctor, uh, according to what President Briggs was asking of him. So if they've already did the assessment and it's already put into the how much it would be for all those schools, Attorney Johnson, I see no need of us to come back and do this and, and say, hey, look, we're going to spend forty thousand dollars, and but we've already done the assessment. We're telling you guys already how much it is. So to me, I think this. This motion would be dead overall. Okay, so that that's President Briggs' motion didn't get a second, so there's no motion pending on the floor, and there's been no action um, 
other than a failed motion on this issue? Failed two motions. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Because I right. want the record to be, you know, we failed too because we've already been given information from Dr. Weekly and the record will state, Dr. Weekly has stated to President Briggs well, the motion that she had already stated, but Dr. Weekly has already answered it because he stated he, it's already been in there from Justin and them. So they've already looked at all these buildings. So right. the, rec the record is going to reflect what President Briggs was asking. That's what I'm saying. Correct. The, re the, the record will reflect that there were two motions made and neither yes, of them received a second. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, moving right along uh, on that compass, we also had uh, on the compass thing for 4.9, uh, uh, the update on the parking lot for parking of the vans. Uh, we never got an update to that, Dr. Skinner. I mean, Dr. Uh, Weekly, because you were supposed to be getting something something you was going no. to try to move the vans over there no I, w I never said i was going to move the vans what we talked about was gates and so if we did parking lot gates then there would be no reason to do anything with the vans the vans would stay exactly where they are the only vans we have are the ones that are behind baptiste right now uh that technology has one and i think food service has one so there's two vans um if we had parking lot gates, then though, though, there would be no other issue there. So, so Mr. Weekly, going back to last year, or was it over the summer when we had our, was it our uh, work trucks? They were, stolen. I believe we had that, they were stolen along with the um, tools. They, they were parked, they were parked out front of the building, uh -huh. front, right, right underneath the light pole and, and got stolen, yes. So they were parked at night or during the day? It was Those, it was that night that they were stolen. Okay, so someone left them, they weren't parked in a like secured place. They were just left out in front of the building? They were put underneath the light because that way we could have cameras on them. Okay, and technology decided to park them out underneath the lights because we had cameras focused on that area. Okay, but did we ever recover those trucks back? Because we never heard, we talked to you, that, I didn't, did we get those that trucks van's back? Never been, that van's never been recovered. And have mm -hmm. we followed up with the police department to figure out what's the update and why, has anybody been following up on why, where the truck has been or anything like that? Yeah, they haven't recovered it yet. They, they haven't, they have no recovery ever yet, so they don't know where it is or who stole it. Well, who's been checking with the police department about this van? Because I think what happened was this has been, the van got stolen and I feel like nobody has been updated or nobody's been checking on, you know, each each week, at least one check-in to see, hey, where's the van? Has it been recovered? Or if they check in with us, because like I said, that's money coming out of our pocket. And that, that wasn't the first one that we had stolen. Because along Sergeant with our- Dijkstra, Sergeant Dijkstra, our head of security is in constant contact with South Patrol, who is the one that took the report. So uh, mm -hmm. he's in- daily contact with them about any updates that happen with not only our stolen vehicles, but any security things that are happening within the neighborhoods. Okay. So what are you well, guys suggesting that we do to prevent this from happening again? So what measures are we taking to stop our vans and stuff from getting stolen? Are we coming up with some ideas on what we can do to protect our stuff? One thing we did was we added the uh, steering column uh, bars uh, to the, to the, they don't work very well, but sometimes they're a deterrent. Uh, so we added those to the vans that are being parked behind Baptiste at this time. Um, and we upgraded our uh, security gate and locks at uh, the buildings and grounds uh, building where we lock ours up. So uh, we have made a few upgrades to that. I know the technology's got those and food service has those. Food service on it sometimes is able to park their van inside. They don't they aren't able to do it every night, but sometimes they're able to park it inside the warehouse as well. So when they're able to do that, they do for added security. Well, maybe I'm kind of shocked here because my understanding of when we was talking about uh, compass is that you guys were looking at building or at uh, taking the uh, cars over there and securing them and having because you was talking about you had to build some type i thought you was building some type of road or it's already got a road over there so all the so that's the I reason never, why i never 
I said I must. I never discussed it. Did I ever commit to that? Okay, so you never committed to that. Okay, so right now all of our vehicles, as of you right now, they are secured and they are at places where they're secured right now. Is that correct? We have 25 vehicles. 23 of or 22 of them are behind lock gates. Okay. There are three of them that are behind Baptiste. It's a box truck that is mm -hmm. food service. We have, and then when they have one van, food service does, and then mm -hmm. technology van. And they're using those bars and steering well as well as locking them up every, each night. So okay, so is there any way they can go behind that gate as we was talking about that's behind compass and lock them up in there? Can they be locked up? Behind what gate? I thought uh, doesn't Burke uh, compass whatever it's called? Do they have? Don't they have an extended playground? Some area back there in the back? Yeah, but it's is it gated in? Now you couldn't park back there though. You can't park back there. Okay. So uh, those, so we don't have anything to secure those vans, basically. They're locked and they have the bar across the steering wheel. Okay. And, oh, well, Mr. Wickley, um, could you do us a favor and see if someone is able to update us this week? We need an update on that van from the police department. We just want to check in and see what's going on. Other, what other leads do they have on recovering our van? Because I feel like we, we haven't had any updates on it, and I would like to hear something this week regarding if what's going on, if they got any leads or anything. It's been a whole year almost, and it's kind of hard for me to, it's a year, and we haven't recovered anything. And if I can think back, I know you said something about we recovered some tools one time. Was that was a truck that was that was stolen from our, our place. We recovered tools, oh, okay. but not the truck recovered tools so i don't know I, I feel like they might have you know let the ball drop but i would like to have an update on if what's going on with that van if we could please i'll ask sergeant dice for an update okay thank you all right thank you very much all right moving right along to uh uh 4.10 2020 bond issue Well, ballot language uh, has to be adopted for the election commission. Um, it is, has to be taken to the election commission prior to May 26th. Uh, we worked with uh, the Gene Metzer of the Hardwick Law. We also had a committee of crew people that looked at the uh, bond language as well. That committee was Dr. Skinner, Attorney Carla Fields Johnson, Shelley Wiltsey, Lorenzo Boyd, our bond council, or our bond uh, company, uh, Marissa Cleaver Womble and myself along with attorney Metzadura to determine the proper language. And I described to them, I gave her option one and said, this is the most comprehensive option we have to develop bond language around it. And she was able to do that. She got uh, input from all of us on that committee, including attorney Phils Johnson, uh, who provided some updates on page and I, right here, Dr. Skinner is showing you that bond language and things that need to be submitted to the election commission. On page seven, if you'll keep scrolling, Dr. Skinner, right there where it says question in bold. That bold paragraph is what would be presented to the voters. And as you read that, you can see that it is very generic in nature and it's generic for a reason. It's generic to give allow latitude for the school district to perform the repairs and things that they need to be associated with the bond projects in option one. Uh, so if that's what would appear to the ballot, to the uh, voters on the ballot itself. Has the rest, and you guys have already sent this out to the rest of the board? Oh, no. No, okay. It's so to, to the committee first and then to the board. Okay. Um, we will vote on this one today because we also have to vote on a date to state it also. So uh, is there anything that you have other than this uh, that you want to show us Dr. Weekly? No, this is all. Okay. Uh, I think I saw President Briggs. Are you here now? Uh, yes, I'm on the board. I'm on the on the call. Uh huh. Okay. All right. So now the chair is seeking an election. I mean, election. Oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> the the chair is seeking a motion to adopt the bond language for uh, the. Uh, 
Let me see how does it state. Just bond issue, 2020 bond issue for 4.10. I move that we move the bond language to the full board uh, for the uh, 2020 bond election. Can I get a second? I second. It has been second and we will uh, put that on. 4.10 will go to the full board. Um, Vice President Reagan, please take a vote on that. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I forgot. I forgot. I forgot. I'm slipping. I'm slipping. I'm getting too young for this, boy. All right. Uh, <laughs> President Briggs. Aye. Director Carter. Aye. The chair votes aye. Uh, passes three to zero. Okay, so 4.11. Huh? Oh, I, uh, anything. I didn't ask for any questions or nothing. I did skip that. Okay, I guess no question. Okay, 4.11, uh, I did amend it uh, for the Smith uh, Hill football field scoreboard. We talked about this back in last year too, once again, uh, somehow it kept on slipping through the cracks. So how are we looking on the scoreboard up at Smith Hill uh, Junior High School out there now? Uh, are we, because it wasn't yes. fixed, it wasn't fixed when I went. So I know it wasn't fixed. So I, It's I always been hear, fully functional. It wasn't functional. It's well, never okay. not worked. It never not worked. Yeah, it wasn't it had nothing to do with the functionality. Of it. it had to do with the people that were operating it. So we had to teach them how to operate it. So it's fully functional. So it's going to work this coming fall. If it's going to every fall. Okay, I'm gonna make sure because y'all, even if I'm not here, y'all gonna still see me in the board meetings. <laughs> Love y'all too. But anyway, we gonna move along. Okay, so the items to go to the full board uh, will be uh, 4.10, which is the 2020 bond issue that uh, Facilities Committee has uh, 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 stated that it will go to the full board. Uh, 6.0 future me uh, meeting dates, which is 6.0. 6.1 is regular session board meeting May the 21st, 2020 at 6.30 p.m. Uh, before we leave, I want to thank everybody that has uh, tuned in to our uh, virtual meeting today. We do appreciate the community. We appreciate coaches that are on here, teachers or any other community stakeholders. Uh, before we do adjourn this meeting, uh, I, uh, Director Carter, do you have anything? No, I'm okay. I don't have anything. Okay. President Briggs, do you have anything? I think we may have lost President Briggs. Okay. So uh, this meeting is adjourned at uh, 7.01. Uh, do I need to take a roll call for that too? I think. Or not? That would be great. <laughs> so do I got to seek a motion too? So the chair is seeking a motion for adjournment for 7.1. A motion that we adjourn on 7.1. I second it. Uh, I got to call the roll. Direct card. Aye. The chair votes aye. Uh, passes two to zero. We are adjourning this meeting at 7.01 p.m. You all have a great day. Be safe.